Animal Kingdom, quick revision. Let's start. Animal Kingdom. <clears throat> the very important points to remember in Animal Kingdom. First of all, let's start with the basis of classification. Animals are classified into on the basis of following of the funda few fundamental characters like uh, uh, levels of organization. Uh, first of all, uh, that uh, we are going through the levels of organization, that uh, basic classification in uh, levels of organization is cellular level and uh, tissue level, organ level, organ system level. In the levels of organization, the basic classification is cellular level. Cells are arranged as loose cell aggregates. I have an example, phylum porifera, which are commonly called as sponges. Okay, next, tissue level. Here in cellular level, there is no coordination between the cell because of lack of nerve cell and sensory cell. That was a little bit uh, advanced in case of tissue grade where the coordination between the cells is possible that's why they get that cells group of cells can form the tissue the cells performing the same function arranged in the form of tissue and their coordination possible because of the presence of nerve cell and sensory cell we have an example cylinderata along with tenophora then tissues are developed into organs Tissues are developed into organs in phylum platy helminthes. Their tissues are grouped together to form the organ. Organ level of organization is seen in phylum platy helminthes. Next, organ system level. That organs are more developed into the systems like digestive system, respiratory system. Likewise, organs are associated to form the functional systems in anilida, arthropoda, mollusca, echinodermata. Hemicardata and cardata. We can say, I, we can add ASCII helminthes also. That uh, we have the systems like uh, digestive, respiratory, circulatory, likewise. And circulation wise, we have two types open type and closed type. In open type of circulatory system, if you take cockroach, you will understand much better. In case of cockroach, 13 chambered heart is present where blood vessels is the blood vessels are present we have a dorsal aorta and dorsal aorta is pumping the blood into the body cavities where blood pumped out through the heart and not confined to blood vessels where it comes and into the cells and tissues and directly bought there we can see open vascular system in closed vascular system that uh, if you take uh, the human heart, you understand much better that there is an aorta that branched into arteries, arterioles, then capillaries, and all the capillaries form venules, veins, and then that goes to the vena cava into the heart. So that means we have blood vessels, we have blood capillaries, and uh, arteries, veins, and blood capillaries. This makes what closed vascular system. In the coming classes, you are going to learn them in detail. Just you need to remember blood vessels are present but capillaries are absent and the blood bath is the tissues directly we can say open type. Vessels are there, arteries, veins, capillaries, they get categorized into we can say closed type of vascular system. Then symmetry wise. Then if you cut uh, a sponge uh, that uh, we don't, which uh, don't have a specific shape, if you cut in any angle you don't get equal halves. Equal halves, we don't get that we can say asymmetrical, cannot be divided into equal halves through um, any plane, any median plane. That we say phylum porifera is example for this and radial symmetry, radial symmetry in case of cylinderata and tenophora and uh, echinodermata adult also having, there is an axis called oroeboral axis, we call this as a central axis. If you cut through the central axis in any plane, you are getting equal halves, we call radial symmetry. Then only one plane, if you take human being, that is mid-sagittal axis, through this mid-sagittal axis, if we cut the organism, we'll find two identical right and left halves. We call it as 
bilateral symmetry. It is said to be as bilateral symmetry. So example for asymmetry, you can take phylum porifera, radial symmetry, cylindrata, tenophora, and adult echinoderms will come as an exceptional. Larva is having bilateral symmetry in them. Bilateral symmetry. We can start from phylum platyhelminthes onwards. Phylum platyhelminthes to cardata is uh, having bilateral symmetry. Okay, moving on with the germinal layers. Germinal layers during embryonic development, when the zygote is growing in a particular embryo, in certain stage of embryo, if you have only two germ layers, like ectoderm and endoderm only two germ layers we say that as ectoderm and endoderm only two germ layers are present we can say it as diploblastic cells are arranged as two embryonic layer external ectoderm internal endoderm in between them might be there is a mesoglia mesoglia may present in between but there is no germ layer, that a third germ layer, that we can say diploblastic. Whereas in case of triploblastic animals, along with the outer ectoderm and inner endoderm, ectoderm and endoderm, along with them, we'll find a third germ layer that is called mesoderm. My dear students, it's a sharp revision. We are not going into much details. A major concept only we are discussing here. It will be helpful for those students who are revising this revision of the chapter. Just we are revising here. It will go much faster. Just to remember two germ layers, diploblastic, three germ layers, ectoderm, endoderm, and mesoderm, triploblastic. Example for diploblastic, we can take uh, uh, that porifera, cylindrata, and tenophora. And triploblastic, we can say phylum platyhelminthes to cardata, Triploblastic, we can say they have three germ layers. Okay. In the categorization of the classification, we have one more that is silom. These are the things which makes the basis for classification here that uh, like uh, levels of organization we are seeing germ that are uh, basis of germ layers and type of circulation, open type and closed type. And now moving on to the silom that a silom. What is a silom between the ectoderm and endoderm? Outer layer ectoderm, inner layer endoderm. In between them, if there is no any proper cavity that we can say filled with mesenchymal tissues, just follow the violet one. We are talking about uh, that uh, mesenchyma or parenchymal tissue. Here there is no body cavity. There is no body cavity. We can say a silom. Okay. Next, what is a true silom? Eucilome or silomate, they have secondary body cavity. So how do we recognize the secondary body cavity? The key point to remember, the true body cavity or secondary body cavity, the key point here, it should be lined with the mesodermal layers. The cavity which is lined with mesodermal layer, the cavity present between the two mesodermal layers, we can call it as secondary body cavity and that is called Silomate, U silomate. Okay, then talking about the pseudo silom. In case of pseudo silom, mesoderm is uh, lining only one side. That means here that will go only to the ectoderm side. That uh, and they have embryonic body cavity in the adult. Primary body cavity or embryonic blaster seal remain in the adult. There is no. We can't consider this as a true silom. And uh, here. The mesoderm is present in the form of scattered mesodermal pouches. You have to remember here, mesoderm is not lined. It is developed in the form of scattered mesodermal pouches. Okay, so a silom, mesenchymal tissue or parenchymal tissue is filled over. There is no body cavity, neither primary body cavity nor secondary body cavity here in case. And if a secondary body cavity present and that is lined with mesoderm on both sides, we can say that is a silomate. Whereas scattered mesodermal pouches are present and primary body cavity present, we say it as a, a silo, the pseudo silomate. Okay. Then 
the acylomate, we have example phylum platy helminthes and uh, the pseudo silomate, ASCII helminthes, silomates, uh, anilida onwards. We say tail car data, true body cavity animals we can call here. That silomate. And moving on to the segmentation pattern. Body segmentation. The body segmentation are true metameric segmentation, true metamerism, we can say here. It is found in Anilida, Arthropoda, Cardata. To be noted down, Anilida. We know that Anilida is having, earthworm is having 100 to 120 segments here, are present. At least in cockroach also, body we divide into head, thorax and abdomen. Uh, that body of cockroach is divisible into head, thorax and uh, abdomen. So in that case, even we can say uh, that in case of cockroach, head is having uh, six segments, thorax is having uh, three segments, abdomen is having ten segments. So that means there is a segmentation in them also what we are talking about. Well, how in car data that we know? Let's take human as an example. We have ribs. That means they are segmented. Twelve pairs of ribs are present. And we have vertebral column. They are also will have the segmentation. Means in few places of car, that in car data have segmentation. At least they have segmentation, isn't it? So that's what we said. Segmentation is external as well as internal in Anilida. We have an example at Tuam. Segmentation external in Arthropoda. There is no internal segmentation like septa in Arthropoda. Segmentation is internal in cardiac, like in vertebral column, like in ribs. We have segmentation. And uh, let's talk about metamerism, which is very important question in need. A body is externally and internally divided into segments with serial repetition, at least some organ, we call it as metamerism. We have a best example, earthworm. Then phylum platy helminthes, particularly there is an animal called a tapeworm. There you'll find some segments, we call them as proglatids. Here, in them, segments are present, but you can't say they are the true segments because various types of uh, shapes and size the segments are present in them and they are individual even. So that's what you can call pseudo-metameric segmentation. In case of tapeworm particularly, true metameric segmentation, we can give example, metamerism. So okay, in the series, moving on towards uh, the notochord, a rod-like structure formed during embryonic development in the dorsal side of the body. It is a rod-like structure. It formed during embryonic development, location, dorsal side, and derived from mesoderm. These are the things we remembered. Animals who have car notochord, we call them as cardates. Those who don't have notochord, we can say non-cardate. Porifera 2, hemicardata also we can include. Porifera 2, hemicardata will find notochord. Okay, so that's it. This is a, a brief introduction of animal kingdom. As uh, we are seeing the different issues here, as uh, in the under the heading, we are seeing different issues like uh, in case of animal kingdom, classification basis, uh, we discussed some issues here. As uh, we said, the basis of classification, we said that uh, the fundamental features like levels of organization and uh, type of circulation, symmetry, germinal layers we are seeing, and type of body cavity, segmentation patterns, and notochord. Now, let's go through phylum wise. Phylum wise. In every phylum, some key points will be there in examination point of view, neat examination point of view, that we have to remember over. That uh, animals in case of phylum porifera, they are also called sponges and uh, the animals mostly marine, asymmetrical. We have a spongy lava, freshwater sponge, that uh, except that remaining uh, most of them are uh, marine and they have cellular level of organization diploblastic animals and for food gathering for respiratory exchange and removal of wastes there is a special system called water canal system in which uh, the minute pores present on the surface of the body through which the water enters inside the minute pores are called ostea and water enters into the body cavity what do you call spongocele 
and uh, water whatever entered into the sponge seal exit through a bigger opening we can say osculum so sequence to be remembered that water enters through the ostia enters into the sponge seal exit through osculum we call this special system as canal system a minute pores on the body ostia the sponge seal the body cavity osculum exit the water so and these particular uh, sponge seal is lined with coenocytes like this lining of uh, sponge seal is with coenocytes i'll show the coenocyte or color cell separately here and here these are the coenocytes which create water currents for the movement of uh, water through the sponge seal to exit uh, through osculum and uh, body wall has skeleton of spicules or spongin fiber for reference sponges are hermaphrodite fertilization internal development is indirect we have larval form parenchymal and amphiblastula no names are referred and mentioned in uh, ncrt no, that is no need to remember so sponges are marine mostly asymmetrical cellular level of organization diploblastic animals and having a special water canal system which include ostia sponge seal and uh, osculum in the same series you have to remember the sequence you have to remember and body wall has skeletons of uh, spicules or spongin fibers development is indirect fertilization is internal animals are hermaphrodite that we have the example cycon u spongia spongilla fresh water sponge okay then moving on with uh, phylum porifera to phylum cylindrata in phylum cylindrata animals are also called cnidarians having body cavity as a cylindron we call them as cylindrata but having a special kind of cells called nidoblast cells which are uh, stinging cells we can say so we can call them as cnidaria okay moving on they are usually marine and uh, radially symmetrical fresh water is also there hydra is a fresh water one sessile or free swimming sessile form is called polyp and free swimming form is called medusa sessile polyp and free swimming form is called medusa cylindrates are having tissue level of organization diploblastic condition for the capture of prey anchorage defense there are special cells as i said now that uh, nidoblast cells or nidocytes are present we can we can say stinging capsules they have that's why we can say nematocytes also on above the tentacles on above the tentacles we'll find these kind of nidoblast cells are present they are for uh, capture of prey anchorage and defense and moving on digestion this is very important to remember digestion is extracellular and intracellular that they have a central gastrovascular cavity and an opening called hypostome and body wall of some composed of calcium carbonate corals and uh, as we said now cylindrate are having two forms polyp form medusa form polyp example we have hydra medusa aurelia then here the special feature uh, in case of these organisms uh, that uh, we say metagenesis metagenesis is a characteristic feature of obelia we have an example here obelia in case of obelia a free swimming umbrella shaped medusa sexually reproduce and form polyp polyp asexually reproduce and form medusa these kind of alternation of generations in obelia is considered as metagenesis it is considered as metagenesis okay this is to be remembered and uh, we have physalia here portuguese man of war physalia is the best example for polymorphism uh, what do you call polymorphism which means many polyps and medusas join in one place and uh, form a colony and acting like a single individual we have a best example physalia we call the feature as polymorphism feature said to be as polymorphism adamsia sea anemone pennatilla sea pen gargonia sea fan meandrina brain coral to be remembered over uh, just i maintained a small uh, 
uh, to remember the example to remember the examples i just suggest you to go for that my channel the, i suggest you to go for my channel here in this uh, i'll show you how to open my channel in this case wait a minute wait a minute i'm going there in my channel you can go through the here it is you have to go google and there wait a minute uh, just i'm showing the google to you in in google just you need to type as a need recon capital or small no matter needs recon that uh, where you'll get needs recon that black spot dot com in needs recon animal kingdom so if you click on here just you have to memorize examples separately animal kingdom part one examples you'll get like this yeah, animal kingdom part one examples you're going to get like this so here it is additionally separately have to spend some time here to learn the examples okay yeah, okay let's get back let's get back uh, with uh, so that was the method you should follow then uh, we're moving on to the chapter here so that means here examples you have to learn separately need to go with separately animal kingdom part one examples part two example that means car data is uh, made a small video in 10 minutes you will get the examples for three times you spend some time there just five to six times listening to them, you will get the examples easily and comfortably. Moving on to the phylum tenophora. Phylum tenophora. Here, uh, phylum tenophora uh, animals are commonly called uh, sea walnuts or comb jellies. They're exclusively marine. This is going to be noted down. Exclusively marine, radially symmetrical, tissue level of organization present, diploblastic animal. Digestion like cylindrates here also the both extra and intracellular key points to be remembered external eight external rows of ciliated comb plates are present for locomotion that already asked the need about bioluminescence the property of production of light by the organism is the exclusive property of tenophora and these are hermaphrodite only sexual reproduction occurs here only sexual reproduction occurs fertilization external development is indirect with a sedipid larva no need to remember the layer larval name so points to be remembered animals are commonly called sea walnuts or comb jellies exclusively marine radially symmetrical tissue level of organization diploblastic tenophores are in tenophora digestion is extracellular and intracellular in tenophora comb plates are present they are very important they are for locomotion and eight are present production of light and hermaphroditism only sexual reproduction are the characters of class sorry phylum tenophora moving on examples pleurobrachia tenoplana see walnuts are comb jellies we can say them as moving on to the phylum platyhelminthes phylum platyhelminthes animals are commonly called flat worm dorsal ventrally flattened body mostly endoparasites bilaterally symmetrical triploblastic acylomate with organ level of organization okay and absorb nutrients to the body surface tape worm is there tape worm by looking by just make uh, example as tape worm this point is given in case of tape worm there is no gut or elementary canal what they do, just they absorb the food materials through their body surface. And parasitic forms have hooks and suckers. Itself, the tape form I'll show you. These are the suckers. The four suckers are present. Three I can show. Four on other side. And uh, hooks are present. So, uh, parasitic form have hooks and suckers. Flame cells are present here. Flame cells. The flame cells are helpful for asthma regulation and excretion. This is the story of phylum platyhelminthes. Moving on, in platyhelminthes, unisexual and fertilization is internal and many larval stages are present. If you take uh, fasciola, viracidium, sporosis, radia, sarcaria, metasarcaria, no need to remember the larval names. 
in our Tinia, Sisti Circus, Unku Spear, Hexagon, that likewise, uh, just remember the common name, Tinia, Tapeworm, Fascula, Liver Fluke, and this is a separate question. Planaria has high regeneration capacity in phylum platy helminthes. Moving on to the ASCII helminthes, animals are also called round worms, we can say here, round worms may be free living or parasitic, aquatic or terrestrial. Here also the bilateral symmetry. Bilateral symmetry is from phylum platy helminthes to cardata and triploblastic condition also. So what makes this phylum? Pseudocilomate. Bilaterally symmetrical, triploblastic is common from phylum platy helminthes to cardata. So it, it is a pseudocilomate. Complete elementary canal present with the muscular pharynx. Remaining elementary canal is non-muscular. And uh, waste is removed through the excretory tube and excretory pore. Unisexual animals, females are longer than the male. They remember Ascaris. <coughs> Excuse me. Ascaris. Male is shorter, female is longer. Fertilization is internal, development is direct or indirect. Ascaris, roundworm, ucararia, phylaria worm, ankylostoma, hookworm are the examples. Moving on. Phylum Anilida. Phylum Anilida. Phylum Anilida. Animals are aquatic here. Aquatic, some terrestrial also there. Free living and parasitic. Aquatic, terrestrial and free living are parasitic. La leech is there to say parasite. So bilateral symmetrical as usual. Triploblastic. What makes this phylum? Organ system is also there from ASCII helminthes to cardata. What makes this phylum? Metamerically segmented body to be remembered over. Eucilomate. We said Anilida to Cardata are eucilomate. And this is the point to make uh, a special characteristic longitudinal and circular muscles for locomotion. Closed vascular system. Closed vascular system. We have a small uh, difference between the nearest along with, with our earthworm. The nearest is diocious. That means male, female are separate. Okay, but in earthworm, male, female are present in the same animal. As we know, we have a special uh, type study about earthworm. Neris is diocious, an aquatic animal. It has lateral appendages called parapodia. In case of Neris, parapodia are present. They contain CTA and also they contain blood capillaries. So that means parapodia act like gills having blood capillaries. Parapodia for locomotion having CT. Especially parapodia is there for class Polychaeta, phylum uh, Anilida. Just no need to remember. Class nearest, you have to go through. Okay, then nephridia, any nephridia, any excretory organ, you have to remember primarily they are for asthma regulation and uh, then for excretion. The neural system consists of paid ganglia connected by lateral nerves and double ventral nerve cord, double ventral nerve cord. Sexual reproduction is there. From here onwards, you don't find any sexual reproduction. Like in uh, Ascalminthes also, no uh, sexual, re sexual reproduction. Higher vertebrate, invertebrates or vertebrate don't have any sexual, higher. Okay, then moving on, earthworm, ferritima, leech, hiridinaria, and uh, these two are the hermaphrodite. Both male female reproductive systems are present in same animal. Nearest sandworm is diocious, unisexual, we can say. Male female are separate. That to be remembered over. Moving on to the phylum Arthropoda. As I already said, it's a quick revision. Largest phylum. This can be a question. Largest phylum. As usual, we are started uh, in platy helminthes this feature, bilateral symmetrical, triploblastic. Here also the segmentation present. We said Anilida, Arthropoda and Cardata are having segmentation. Segmentation external and organ system level of organization is present. This is a silome, true body cavity present here also. Body is divisible into head, keeping cockroach in mind. You can remember this head, thorax and abdomen. And it has a chitinous exoskeleton. Jointed appendages are present here. Ardhru means uh, jointed. Poda means legs. Moving on to the characters. More characters of phylum Ardhru Poda. Here this can be a question. Respiration by gills. Book gills. 
book lungs and tracheal system excretion is through malpighian tubule this can be a question gills book gills book lungs tracheal system respiration malpighian tubules in arthropoda for excretion sense organs include there are antennae just keep a cockroach in mind to answer, answer this kind antennae and eyes are present there is statosis in class class crustacea prawns are having this statosis fertilization usually internal development is indirect or direct and these are mostly oviparous egg laying animals apis honeybee bombyx silk moth laxifer lac laxifer lac insect anopheles cuvelex sedis mosquito locusta gregarious pairs limulus living fossil we can say limulus these are the examples as i already said you have to read examples separately separately in my channel we have a, a memory uh, the part here uh, example uh, the common name and category as read for three times just you need to listen it uh, again and again to get these particular examples moving on phylum mollusca second largest of the phylum we already said first largest phylum is uh, arthropoda second largest terrestrial or aquatic Molluscan means soft bodied animal soft and spongy layer of skin and body is covered by that uh, first of all body of molluscans classified into head visceral mass and uh, muscular foot so that to be remembered over in the head region in the buccal cavity there is a special structure called radula radula is a rasping organ for feeding in mouth and uh, head has some sensory tentacles are present head has sensory tentacle and body is uh, having as the cover we can say mantle and mantle with mantle cavity this is the mantle cavity mantle cavity we know this these are bilaterally symmetrical triploblastic organ system level and coelomate body is uh, they said head this is the head muscular food this is the food and visceral hump the left over body is called visceral hump and it's covered by calcium carbonate shell no segmentation in the body calcium carbonate shell cover will have so then uh, space between the visceral hump and mantle this is mantle we say mantle cavity in which all they open anus opens uh, our uh, so called gill tinidae are present here only likewise so these are the characteristic features to be remembered in case second largest phylum terrestrial or aquatic bilaterally symmetrical triploblastic organ system level with the uselomatic condition and exclusive molluscan character head muscular foot and visceral hump calcareous shell unsegmented body these are the representation for phylum mollusca and uh, mantle is a unique feature of phylum mollusca with mantle cavity respiration by feather like gills we call them as tinidia the feather like gills are present tinidia we can say and rodilla is a unique feature of this particular phylum oviparous dioecious indirect development is seen over moving on okay let's see examples here pila apple snail pink teda pearl oyster octopus devil fish sepia cuttle fish loligo squid aplysia sea hare dentalium tusk shell ketoplura ketoplura or chiton commonly called moving on phylum echinodermata phylum echinodermata spiny bodied animals echino means spiny der means skin so that's why we can say spiny bodied organism endoskeleton in the form of calcareous acicle surface on above the body surface we'll find uh, these kind of acicles like this so on above the acicles we'll find spines and uh, as uh, we said uh, earlier uh, they have radial symmetry in adult bilateral symmetry in the larval stages organ system as usual triploblastic as usual coelomate condition complete digest system present mouth ventral anus on dorsal side mouth ventral anus and dorsal side they have a special system like porifera having canal system in echinodermata 
there is a water vascular system no excretory system excretory system is absent reproduction sexual sexes are separate fertilization external development is indirect with the free swimming larva there are so many larval form bipinnaria brachialaria of your flutius echinoflutius no need to remember any larval form here just go through the characters that's all whatever given in ncrt they are already proved that we'll get in examination adult radial symmetry that means last from last three years no question out came out from ncrt text so reading additional here may affect the main points you may forget and the additional points if you remember that where there is no advantage in examination that's why you need to be much careful while reading this kind of memory topics what are unique that is very important what can be asked as a question from last 3 4 years you might have observed over from even a bigger chapter animal kingdom we are not getting a single question from out of ncrt so that's why only ncrt points you have to remember you have to revise again and again that is the motto of this quick revision video moving on phylum epi hemicardata the last phylum of uh, non cardates worm like organism it can be a question hemicardata how to recognize them as it was earlier placed as a sub phylum of phylum cardata by thinking that uh, they have notochord but after the scientists are discovered that uh, there is not notochord that is uh, uh, should be named as a new name as tomochord bilaterally symmetrical as we already started this feature from phylum platyhelminthes onwards here also triploblastic platyhelminthes onwards triploblastic coelomate we started from anelida organ system level we started from ascii helminthes then body is cylindrical and has proboscis collar trunk this is a unique feature to be remembered body is divisible into proboscis and this is the collar and the remaining body we say trunk okay open type of circulatory system present this is very important proboscis gland are for excretion respiration by gills proboscis gland is for excretion sexes are separate external fertilization development is indirect we have a larva here carnaria larva we say balloon glasses sac sac glasses commonly called a corn worm Hemicardates are commonly called echon worms. So these are the cardate character, uh, that non-cardate characteristic features from phylum Porifera to Hemicardata. Revision is required over, just revision. And I request the students to download these particular feature, feature animal kingdom, part one examples, part two example, part one features, part two features. part one features uh, uh, document also available here in this black just you need to go through you have to recognize them like this like this means here we have a worksheet to do antenna and eyes that you have to recognize as arthropoda radial symmetry adult and bilateral symmetry larva that echinodermata as in the previous uh, the the notes when i am explaining where i circled i made it as a worksheet you have to recognize bioluminescence cynopora calcarea shell mollusca canal system porifera more revision is possible like this okay so then uh, in the next video we'll go through animal kingdom part 2 part 2 that means cardate exclusive cardate characteristic features okay then thank you